your first draft of everything is shit. That's what Ernest Hemingway said. And, um, you know, that is and isn't true in many ways. But it's something to think about. Neil Gaiman said a little more elegantly that an author's first draft is the author telling themselves the story. And after that, you have to, to actually convert it into something where you're telling other people the story. Um, and it's a situation that I have found myself in now. So I recently just published my most recent novel. I recently just published my most recent novel. I've only had one cup of coffee this morning, so forgive me. I recently published my my latest novel, and uh, it seems to be doing pretty well. People seem to like it. They're a little frustrated that it ends in a cliffhanger, but other than that, it's going really well. Now, the thing is, it's only half a novel. I mean, it's not, but let me explain it. So I've been working on this, this story arc uh, for over a year now. And um, I've gone down so many convoluted different paths. I wrote 40,000 words for the first draft and I scrapped all of it. And then I woke up 2.30 in the morning and wrote a completely different book. Um, and then I have been working on this one solidly. Um, and I finished the first draft. And it was 230,000 words long. That is longer than Atlas Shrug. That's longer than War and Peace. That was so long that I couldn't even have uh, theoretically published a paperback of it because it was too many pages. And I remember when I finished that first draft, I was like, first of all, thank God I got this story out of me because it was driving me nuts. And secondly, what the hell do I do with this? Because it's not publishable then. My first draft was shit. And, and that was a new feeling for me because I've written 25 novels. So, you know, generally my first draft has got to the stage where it's not actually shit. The novel before this, the one that I got up 2.30 in the morning and started writing, like, I just hammered that out without really stopping. I remember the last 30,000 words I wrote on a 72-hour bender with no sleep. And then after 14 hours of crashing out, I woke up and read through it. And I was like, wow, this, this hangs together really well. So there, my first draft was like 90% complete by the time I, I like, written it. But as I said, I've written 25 books, so hopefully I should have got the, the process down. Writing is an art, as a craft, not an art. And so somebody who's built 25 tables can build one that's better and, and build it faster than somebody who's building their first one. What's my point? Well, my point is um, that's not what happened on this occasion. I finished my story and it was 230,000 words long and it was like, oh my God, I can't publish this. I cannot publish this. So I sat down with a red pen and I was like, I'm going to have to collect huge swathes of it. Um, and the weird thing was, I didn't have to. I read the first like 90,000 words and it was all tight, and well paced and hung together and focused. And I was like, wow, I don't even know what to cut. And then at about 90,000 words, uh, the story ended. I was like, wait, what? I've got 160,000 words of the manuscript left. What, what do you mean? But no, the story had ended. I'd written an entire self-contained novel with the story arc and, and all of the beats of a romance novel. And at 90,000 words, it ended on a HFN, which stands for happy for now. And I was like, oh. So I went, cut off that 90,000 words, edited it, sent it off to my editor, published it. And that's my most recent novel. And that's pretty well packaged together. And then I'm left with 160,000 words afterwards. And yeah, this is where it's like your first draft of everything is shit. Because I sat down afterwards and I'd hoped, I was like, oh, okay, I'll just go through this and presumably this will be as excellent as the first half. And it wasn't, it wasn't at all. Oh, no, oh, it was a mess. It was a huge bloody mess. Uh, and it really did feel like this was me telling myself the story. But there was a story. There was a really, good story with a really good ending in there and it just happened that the way I told it was complete shit so I'm now going to have to go through the process of rewriting that and um, there is one person who consistently comments on my videos Jack Watson. I really appreciate you mate thank you for that he asked about uh, you know can you do a video about pacing and how to plot something out and things and I will fact I will that's gonna be one of the next videos I do because I have to do it with this book but I wanted to make this video because 
The situation I'm in now with this 160,000 word word soup is where a lot of first time authors and authors who are starting off on the path of self publishing find themselves. So, as I said, I, I wrote this 230,000 word huge epic and then I split it into two and the first half is like a self contained story and then I've got 160,000 words that is the story that I never intended to write at all but it is pretty good. So I have to, I'm writing a five book arc that has now become a six book arc and I'm going to have to design a new cover and slot this in as number two. But if you read through the manuscript, what is interesting is it is a full story and it's got a beginning, middle and end and it goes through all the nine points of a traditional um, story arc, it's sort of eight, like the story circle, um, which is something I'll go into in my next video. So all of the ingredients are there and I think a lot of first time authors find themselves in that same situation. They write their book, they get it out of them and their first draft and their first draft can be, you know, something that is written in the comprehensible English language and, uh, and it, it tells you what happened and um, that's what they end up publishing. Uh, and it doesn't resonate with an audience and it doesn't isn't as successful as it should be. I am in that situation right now, but fortunately because I've written 25 novels, I can read through my manuscript and be like, oh, this is not, this is not publishable. And the, th the issues with it are the fact that uh, it's too long. Um, there are the, the classic things that you need in a romance novel of like the hero and heroine having a conflict and then splitting up and getting back together and then this big intense separation at the end and then the hero has to undergo through some fundamental change and, and then there's happy ever after. Those are like little seeds in this manuscript but they haven't blossomed and also I have found myself with a really huge cast of characters because this is almost like my end game my Avengers Endgame where I've written a, a series of 10 books and then all the characters converge in Las Vegas at the same time. So I've written a lot about other characters. And, um, sorry, there's a cat. Uh, so I've written a lot about the other characters in this book and one of the things as I'm going through is I'm like, does anybody really care? Does anybody really care? No. So I realized that to get this book down into a manageable size, I'm going to have to cut out huge sections where I'm talking about other characters because you really have to be focused when you are telling a story, especially a romance book. You have to be focused on the hero and the heroine. So, yeah, it is it is a complete book. I could publish it, people could read it, and they would know what happened, but it's not going to appeal to my audience or the romance audience in general, so I have to completely rewrite it. And that's good, but I think this is something that uh, authors have to think about when they are about to hit publish on their first book. You have to take a step back and say, okay, I've written the story. Is this story told in the best way that it can be? And because first-time authors are first-time authors, or beginning authors are beginning authors, they don't necessarily know what that means, uh, which is fine. As I said, it's like I'm where I am because I've written 25 novels. So I've learned that. I've done the, the, the hard work to learn that. I made a bunch of mistakes along the way, believe you me. Um, but what you can do if you want to be really successful as a self-published author is learn to be really critical about what it is that you have written uh, very early on in the process because that's going to give you a huge advantage moving forward. Um, for me, I was actually talking to, to an, an author friend of mine uh, called Lillian last night, Lillian Munro. She writes great romance books. They're really tightly packaged together. But we were talking about, like, it's, sometimes it's kind of frustrating because there are books and stories and things that you want to write about and talk about. And then, of course, there are the, the conventions of romance and stuff like that that you have to fit within. And it can be really frustrating if you have to compromise what it is you're trying to say to fit within uh, the romance formula. And it can be really uh, frustrating for a romance reader if the romance formula is compromised so the author can tell their story. So what you want to do is, is find that happy medium between the two. Because if you can do that, you're in the sweet spot. If you can find a way that you write what it is you want to write, uh, but you can write it in a way that is what uh, your audience want to read, then you're golden and that's where 
first-time authors uh, can ha give themselves a huge advantage by figuring out what that is. So for me, I'm going to have to take my story, as in all the events that I've written about in this 160,000 word word suit, and then I have to take uh, my, my little story circle. I've designed my own version of the story circle that has, you know, the the eight separate points of Dan Harmon's story circle, but also has these like four additional points that are vital for a romance book. I'm going to have to sit down with that and then go through all the events and things that happen in the, the word soup that I've written and like slot them in where is appropriate. Anything that doesn't fit in there, I have to ditch. And I don't ditch and throw away. What I normally do is I'll take it and I'll put it in a separate word file because when a lot of the stuff I've written about other characters, is going to be useful when I get to the other characters um, having the opportunity to tell their part of the story in this, this six book arc. But doing that is, it's a difficult process and one of the most difficult things about it is you've invested a lot of time and effort and soul and heart into writing your first draft and it can be really, 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 really painful to just carve it up. Um, Stephen King writes Kill Your Darlings and, and he's right, basically you do have to kill things that you know mean a lot to you that you poured out onto the page um, but it's a discipline that is vital if you want to be successful as a self-published author you always have to think not as an author but as a reader what is going to be relevant to them what is going to resonate with them and I, that's what makes the real difference um, and learning that involves a huge amount of discipline. It involves having to like strip away your ego as a writer, uh, which is very difficult. I think I've, I've described writers are like that in that the Venn diagram there, that little circle between raging narcissism and and like crippling insecurity. Uh, so it, writers have a very fragile grasp on their ego as it is, and you have to like strip it down um, and see what you, what is there that is going to make your story resonate with people. But if you can learn that skill, then you are going to be massively successful if you have the discipline to keep writing every day and keep publishing and things like that. So that was that was quite an epic. I don't even. I've only had one cup of coffee this morning, so I don't know if any of that made sense. But um, what I'm going to do in my next video or in a, in a video along is actually show you that process of how you plot out a story. Um, and hopefully that will be quite useful to people. I want to make this video today just, just to say, hey, when you have finished whatever it is that you've written, don't just immediately throw it up there, click the publish button and expect it to work, okay? Anyone in the world can be a successful self-published author. It's all down to learning the craft and then following the process. Uh, you have to learn the craft though, and this is one of the if not the most important vital step my next video i'll show you how that works uh but in this one just slow your roll put on your, your critical thinking hat be prepared to kill your darlings because your book and your career as a writer is going to be so much better afterwards okay uh that's it um i think you have to hit the subscribe button hit the like but no, like this video, hit the subscribe button, press that bell notification, blah, 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 blah. And I will see you again later. Cheers.